Now let's get into a little Q&A. Go from there. Bop, 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 bop. And let's see. All right. There's a good question. MDMD. I think I asked this. Yesterday I asked a question about sweat. I still have a question about it. I'm in the U.S. What if sweat goes up 10 bucks in two years? Can I do something if I can't get out of the app? So here's the thing. If hopefully in two years we will dis, we will have distinguished. This is why I keep talking about this. And no one, very well, you guys get it. But uh, it's hard when I say I want crypto regulation. And everybody's like, oh, you know, we don't need regulation. Blah, blah, blah. We do. We need clarity. We need clarity. What's a currency? What's a commodity? What's a security? If Gary can, Gary and the CFTC head and the powers that be, which is Congress, can all agree on, okay, well, let's use the Howey test that was created in the 1930s, which makes no sense to me, whatever, and we'll figure out what that actually is. Now we can label everything uh, what you know what what it is a, is supposed to be. So, MDMD to answer your question, hopefully in two years, the reason why you can't evaluate or transfer off your sweat coin that you have earned by walking is because sweat, sweat economy, and the business itself do not want to get in any problems with the U.S. legislation. So they say every other place, except for like Iran and some other places, you can transfer your sweat onto any exchange you want to and sell it, go right ahead. We have the tokenomics in place. We have a pretty good business model. I've talked about that in the deep dive. Go check it out on Dan DGen. However, for America, you can't do anything. And we're not going to let you do anything until we get clarity. And when is that going to happen? Well, hopefully, like MD, MD says, in two years. If not, MD, here's the thing. You're stuck with your sweat coin. And actually, you're going to be, and hopefully, in two years, we'll, if, there's no, if there's no clarity, good luck with the institutions coming in. But uh, that is uh, the truth. So that's why I'm always harping just to say, give us some clarity. Now, going on down the road, do I want... Uh, KYC and AML for, for DeFi? No, that's stupid. Why would we do that? And it's, it's like Vitalik Buterin talked about. He goes, you guys can KYC and AML uh, for DeFi, but guess who's not going to? All the hackers and spammers, so what's the point? Yeah, it's dumb. So hopefully I answer your question. Ah, it's very unfortunate there's so many people trying to educate people on the future of crypto. They don't care. They'd rather spend their money on stupid stuff. I've stopped trying to teach people. Yeah, me too. Like, I stopped trying to get my family into a long time ago. If they want to know, they'll come to me. And my friends, uh, few and far between, will ask me questions. But, of course, we're in a bear market, so they don't really care. I'm done teaching people. I like talking to you guys uh, because <laughs> it's going to be funny. This is what's going to happen. It's what happened last time. We all are looked as out. We're all looked at at as the outsiders and then when things start to rally and price numbers go up and people are like oh well maybe those guys maybe the people that talked about crypto were not so dumb and then when it goes parabolic then of course you're seen as a genius and then you get bombarded with the questions and at that point i'll answer your questions no big deal but you missed it already i told you you know i told you a long time ago you should have been there long you know in the bear market that's where all the wealth is made and that's it so yeah, I'm I'm done myself. <laughs> Russ bought an army of wrenches. Ah, here on this channel, I, I do have a lot of moder moderators. I appreciate you guys. Don't poke Beardy. Beardy's grumpy. Let's see. Ooh, great one. Rob, is it possible Bitcoin miners are in the position now by design, meaning large players are doing their best to keep the price down in an inflationary environment to force them into bankruptcy? That would make sense. Actually, if you think about it, it make a lot of sense. And this kind of comes from this article I was going to talk about today, but I couldn't because I had to deal with the Voyager <laughs> story. Uh, Bitcoin mining firm Iris Energy is on the verge of a $103, $103 million loan default. Again, Dylan, Dylan Claire, stating Bitcoin mining firm Iris Energy is closing close to default on $3 million loan by NYDIG. ASIC miners are held as collateral against the loan, meaning the, the mining equipment will be confiscated should Iris Energy fail to upload its repayment schedule. Interest repayments total $7 million per month. The firm's current mining revenue falls short. 
generating only two million per month. I'm not again, not a math genius, but it's very tough to make those payments when you're five million dollars short. So yeah, that's why I know like with Celsius, they want to do that type of business model where they're going to, you know, have Bitcoin miners and it's gonna work out pretty well. I'm hesitant to say that's true. I think Bitcoin mining operation is a very tight industry as far as profit margins. I wouldn't, uh, I don't get into that. And uh, some people swear by it and that's cool, but I see a lot of issues. And also Poolin, one of the largest Bitcoin mining operations, uh, they shut down withdrawals not too long ago. I wanna say about a month ago. Not sure if they're back, but uh, that's kind of telling. I do too. Uh, let's see. Rob, is someone taking all their crypto off the Voyager app? Is still eligible? I don't think so. I don't see what. I don't see why you would. And actually, you had to. They've already sent out the emails to confirm that you uh, have a claim uh, about a couple months ago. So if you didn't get that email, you're not going to be eligible to vote. Ah, oh, let's see. <laughs> Yeah, this is a way. Oh, it's okay, Army. I'll be back in El Paso in uh, May to do the um, that charity obstacle course we do for the Boys and Girls Club. Have to McFly? Yes, the dollar is being weaponized around the world. That's true. The dollar mil milkshake theory. I met that guy here in Puerto Rico. Nice guy. Uh, <laughs> I'm in a Boston subway division. That's amazing. Question to believe privacy between peer to peer is necessary. Yes. While also being compliant towards government regulation when crypto becomes mainstream. Yes and yes. So, so here's the thing, like there's all things that people buy that maybe you don't want people to know. You don't like, wow, uh, Rob bought, uh, you know, 500 pounds of preparation age cream or something like that. You know, like why does Rob need all those, all that preparation age? He must have a lot of problems. Like that's the kind of things that you can, you can look for on the blockchain. You know, if you want to do transactions like a preparation age company or whatever. So for me, I think in, in some way, shape or form, we should have the ability to do private transactions. We do it all the time with cash. I do private transactions sometimes. Don't tell the IRS and no one knows about it. And that's fine. Right. I pay 20 bucks here and 50 bucks there. And no one's the wiser. That's the great thing about cash. I know when people say cash is trash, it's not. It's awesome. I mean, just look at the cartels. That's what they use to launder money. It's fantastic. So for me, I got to say yes. And as far as like government regulation or crypto becomes mainstream, that's we'll leave that to the powers, or the powers that be, and also the committees that represent us, like the blockchain committee that uh, gets to speak in front of Congress. Also, uh, I appreciate the fact that Charles Hoskinson makes his way up to the hill, and. Uh, and gives uh, hearings or gives speeches at, at different hearings and talks about it. So if you're looking for people who are trying to change things, it'd be guys like that. Also, I'd like to see Vitalik do the same thing. Thanks, man. Thanks for coming by. What's the safest exchange you use now since Voyager is no longer available? They all suck. So all exchanges are awful. Let's just say that it's what they are. Some people say, well, I like my exchange. Well, do you trust your exchange to be solvent tomorrow? Who knows? I don't know. That's why I made these rules. So like, I still use FTX. I'd probably still use Voyager if it was, if it was around. However, I can't. That's why I made these rules. And the first or the third rule, excuse me, is don't leave any exchanges. So while I, I have a dollar cost average uh, alert that goes off and I use Coinbase, just so everybody knows. And I pay that, uh, that fee for a Coinbase Zero. I think it's, I can't remember what, how much it is. 20 bucks, 30 bucks, I forgot. But up to $10,000, there's no uh, transaction uh, fees. So I use that every day. I buy certain cryptos. And then also once a week, I buy other cryptos. And uh, once a week, or when I can remember, sometimes it's every three or four days, I take all my crypto off of Coinbase and put it right in my Nano Ledger. So... Uh, to answer your question, all exchanges have the ability to become insolvent at any time. Protect yourself. I learned that lesson the hard way. Do you want to be me? You don't want to be me. Take it all off and uh, you'll be happy. And that's the great thing. Again, no middleman. You control it. You're your own bank. Do whatever you want to it. Uh, gum, gumball gaming clips. 
That sounds good. Voyager got all my polka dot. I don't want Voyager tokens. I barely even want the dot. I probably have already traded it for Bitcoin by now, if not for them. So glad my holdings are cold. Yeah, that's true. Uh, <laughs> Beardy, the safest exchange is still Mt. Gox. That's another thing I forgot to add in there. So, like, if you want to keep going with, with Voyager, this is what I take a look at. You know, Mt. Gox, that happened in 2014. All that crypto is still over there. Bitcoin and whatever. Well, just Bitcoin. And uh, they, th of course, that is, you know, in the, in the Japan. And uh, the Chapter 11 was still filed over here. But then as far as like like the bankruptcy and getting through everything else, else out, they still haven't released those cryptos. So if you want to wait eight years, like do a Mt. Gox situation for Voyager... Forget it. If Celsius came to me today and said, here's 50%, I might even think about taking it. The only thing that would stop me is Simon Dixon and his plan. That would be the only thing. Because the rest of those, the things that are going on is essentially run by children, it sounds like. So that's just me. Oh, the U.S. whale. Thank you, Des, for stopping by. Abhinimatorja, thank you so much, my man, for uh, cleaning up Twitter. I really appreciate it. I really appreciate it. That is a lot of hemorrhoids. Well, when you when you shard yourself silly, those things happen. BJ's going to zero? Well, yeah, of course. Yep. I like Binance. I like what they're doing. I like that they didn't uh, put their name on a on a sports arena or do a bunch of super expensive Super Bowl commercials and just told the line. I like that. <laughs> when profits, I already took profits. And we talked about this yesterday. Uh, I thought that, uh, I mean, we knew that there was 75 basis points coming. I didn't think that uh, Jerome or Jay Powell would uh, pivot in, in his speech and say, oh, yeah, you know what? This was good, but we really got to lay, lay off the gas. He's like, no, we're going to do the same way. So, you know, as we had this run up and all the geniuses that are out there, everybody's a genius, right? All the geniuses that are out there are going like, yeah, it's going to do this and it's going to do that and we're going to go to these and it's maybe not even 75 base, maybe 50 basis points and we'll really t we'll t we'll taper off and this is a real rally. I was like, no. I don't think so. I'll just be safe. And I took some profits. And if I was wrong, I was wrong. And if it ran up, that's okay. I still have profits in the bank. And I'm happy with that. So uh, just remember, that's the great thing about dollar cost averaging. When you go all in, you got to wait for that time frame for, to, to hit when it, when it increases. With dollar cost averaging, like I've been buying Bitcoin at 18300 at 19700 at 20200 and back down again at 18,000. So when it goes to 20,000, guess what? I got a couple grand in profits I need to take. And I take those profits because I'm pretty sure it's going to go back down. I don't sell all of it, but that's just for me. They're not financial advice. But that's just what I do. What would you recommend to content creators that are passionate about crypto and want to put out content about it? I'll answer your question. Because when I first started with with uh, with YouTube, none of those jerks would answer any of my questions about how this all works. So let me tell you, this is how it goes. First of all, don't rely on uh, on YouTube to give you a bunch of money because they don't. They don't pay much. Also, if you want to do something, it's all about consistency. Just keep doing it the same time at the same day or the same time at the same week. That's that's important. Also. You notice I have this cool mic here, but the background looks awful because we have to renovate this whole rental property. People don't care about what it looks like in the background. I mean, the effects are cool, fine. Make sure you have really good audio because if you have audio, people are gonna turn off. And then next, uh, find a good program to use. I personally use this thing called StreamYard and it works out great. Other ones that I've used like OBS and things like that, something that they use in the background as far as the, the sound processor sucks. So this was probably, probably the best one. So I've got a good mic and a good program and it works out pretty well and it's seamless and it's easy. Just be consistent and go from there. 
and just know it's going to take a while to find your voice because you know in the beginning i just sounded like uh who was it the digital the something some investor some guy i sound just like him and then as time goes on then you find your own voice and you be your own person and this is me this is me who says we need regulation this is me who's sends up here and says i screwed up and uh talking about celsius and voyager and that's me sometimes it's missing out on uh being too greedy and not taking profits like i should have and then i i learned from there so that's that's my advice for you is earning yield on an an outdated concept going forward would you say yes at least for now because of the fear of not being able to hit the exit when you want so let me show you something it's a great question there's a website i don't know if you've heard of it it's called dan teaches crypto and it's 100 percent free i made it free because not everybody can afford ten dollars a month or whatever it is or 20 or 100 bucks a month and it's all the best information i could possibly put together and i'm constantly updating it but for here as far as yield goes uh just when you sign up i just ask for an email so i can send you the updates i don't even spam you uh but oh that's not it how do i how do I, module five, how do I stay cryptos? So underneath here, I talk about how to stake to gain yield, which that's what proof of stake is all about, right? Gaining yield by staking. But I make a distinction and you have to take a look at these projects like Theta, like Cardano, like Avalanche, like Polkadot, like Cosmos, and figure out what's the lockup period. And when I unstake, how long before it goes right back into my wallet? And also, I recommend that these things, you don't stake through an exchange. What's the point? They're just going to, you know, if they become insolvent, well, I was staking and give them, give them my credit back. They're not going to do that. So when I stake things, like I use my ledger, if at all possible, because I want to retain my private keys. I don't want to give those to anybody. I've learned my lesson on that one plenty. So when you do this and you're helping to secure the network, so much so much the better right and you can actually make those assets work for you and since you're retaining your private keys you don't lose it along the way but it only works if you do the work and you put it on uh either like like the like a deadless wall for cardano or you use a ledger or you use an actual wallet that is uh, uh registered by the particular project watch all those videos i show you exactly how to do it that's it all right So I have 2750 ADA coins of Voyager. What's my best case situation to retain the most ADA with Voyager and the FTX buy of them in the US? You got to vote. Uh, you can vote yes, you can vote no. Uh, take a look at the information I sent to you or that's in the description. And uh, you're looking at 20, 70 percent of the 2750 ADA. Now, as I understand it, it is a it is a value of that ADA. So moving forward, it won't be. So let's say. Yeah. 70 percent 2300 something like that 2100 of your ada comes back that's your best case scenario and that's it and again it, it's it's a uh they're gonna use a 20-day time frame fed's a bunch of clowns they're not they're pretty smart people they just i gotta tell you some people hate jerome powell's most people hate jerome powell but i think he's just doing what he thinks is is best whether he's wrong or right, I can appreciate that. Unfortunately, yeah, he's screwing up the economy. Rob, one opening FTA's account with the Voyager plan, is that a taxable event having them transferred? No. So as I understand it, talk with your CPA. I'm not a CPA either. Uh, when you transfer crypto from a one wallet to another, it is not a taxable event. When you sell your crypto or you transfer from one crypto to another, then there's a taxable event. Like when you, if you do a swap, say of like, uh, let's say you buy Bitcoin at 10,000, it goes to 20,000. Then you swap that Bitcoin for X amount of polka dot. Uh, that's a taxable event because you have appreciated in value. All right. <laughs> My fortune favors the brave account has been paying out huge staking interest in DeFi. Very nice. 
97 uh, Geo Metro, my first car. Yeah, first car. Rob, you talk about your Amazon business. It's boring. It's very simple. You've got distributors, and they send you spreadsheets of all the different products that they have. You run it through a program, see what the cost analysis is, the cost basis. Then you take a look and say, well, oh, does that sell on Amazon? Does it have the correct SKU number? Then you take that and go, I want 10,000 tables, whatever. And uh, they don't ship them to you. They ship them to Amazon, and they sell them. And that's pretty much it. You're just a middle person. That's all you are. Fulfillment by Amazon. And right now, we're going into Q4. We're in Q4, so this is the time to... You know, if you haven't gotten most of your stuff in, it's it's getting pretty uh, late in the season because we're waiting for the big big shopping season, right? Yeah. So, Dusky, I was confused that VGX said you were going to give us fairly off. They were awarded to pay only ten million. So you have to understand, the ten million is for all those VGX tokens. I know it sounds confusing. I and I went round and round with with the VGX guys, but essentially what it is, is they're going to pay you. Not what the VGX token is worth, but $10 million into it. But it's the same thing as like the, the, like the 72%. I, I should have gone over there a little, bit, a little bit better. But just on this one, do your own research on this one. As far as I understand it, it is for all the tokens across the board. So I'll just be honest with you. I'm going to lose out. The most tokens I had on, on Voyager was the VGX token. I was the highest tier. I didn't take it off because I was... Should have, but I didn't. Didn't sell, didn't do it. And uh, now that's going to be pretty much worthless. So that's it. But not worthless. Do we have to vote? You don't have to vote. I mean, you don't have to vote for the President of the United States or congressmen or senators. They still get voted in. So, yeah, I have the video and I just need to edit it. But with near. With the near protocol, I use my uh, nano ledger, and it uh, works out great. Are equity owners of Voyager maybe the stock? Can we wipe out after the deal closed? Not sure about the stock stock owners, but as far as uh, uh, the people who own uh, crypto, that's all I really am concerned with, and, uh, because that's all I have. But stock, I don't have anything. Rob, have you bought and sold crypto directly from your ledger? I have not. I think in some jurisdictions you can uh, you can swap. I think you can even sell. I'm not sh too sure of the fees, how much they are, but I haven't done that through my ledger. Oh, look at that. On Polkadot, you can now stake as little as one dot. And also, just so you know, I like to talk about that, about uh, staking, because if you don't know, there's a great website. It is called stakingrewards.com. And if you take a look at the top 10, the rewards, what's this? Oh, that's interesting. I haven't, that's, that's new. The rewards, that is interesting. The rewards that you get uh, for like, let's, Ethereum, 4.7% annual. Solana 5.62, Cardano 3.5. That's a little bit low, but okay. Binance, Avalanche 8.33, Polkadot 14%, Cosmos 19%. But over here, it has adjusted reward. The annualized reward rate adjusted by the inflation of the network supply. So you got to understand that just because they give you this crypto doesn't mean it won't inflate, and it does. Uh, Ethereum is actually deflationary now. 4.7 to 4.8. Solana is 5.6 to 1.1. Cardano going pretty high. Negative 0.16. Again, that's if you get 3.5%. But you also have to remember this. It is inflationary, but Cardano right now, the price is 40 cents. What's to stop it from hitting all-time high? I'm just saying. So yes, the address reward for right now would be negative. However, you have to take a look at how much is Cardano going to be worth in, I don't know, two, three, five, ten 10 years. Uh, and then all this stuff. So you can take a look at that, stakingrewards.com. That's why I like to talk about those because you put your crypto to work for you. Uh, let's see. It is pathetic. Has anybody bought crypto on the Ledger app? I have not. There's, I think you can do some things like through MoonPay, which is through Ledger, but it's, but the, but to buy it through a Ledger is expensive. You can also connect it through FTX, and you can buy it, but I don't know uh, uh, the rates themselves. <laughs> I 
<laughs> I trust Bitboy to do my research. That guy is really on on edge of what with Sam. I'm still waiting for the big reveal. We'll see. He's pretty much said the guy should go to jail. We'll find out. Good question. Crypto Ricardo. Great name. Good day, Rob. You think we were like in 2008, like many experts are saying, or more like 2002, including the fear of World War III? And guess what came next, Bullrun? I don't know. So 2007, 8, 9 was a much, much different time, right? Just the the, the total total collapse of uh, of the housing market, swaps and and uh, all the different shenanigans that were going on with uh, just the the big the big institutions that were out there. Now it's a little bit different. Now we're seeing the issue is I mean war is an issue, but we're seeing more things with it's mostly supply supply side and some and some bad policy of the quantitative easing, which is just the printing of money. Do I think that we can get out of this? We can get out of this, but it's going to be very painful, I think, coming up for because of the Fed rate hikes, which is going to throw everything into chaos. But we have to go through it. I mean, does anything anything that you've ever done in your life uh, ever come because of it's just super easy to do? It always comes through a lot of pain. Doesn't matter if you're trying to uh, get in shape. Doesn't matter if you're trying to get that new job. Doesn't matter if you're trying to improve yourself in any way or or do things for your family. It's always a pain. It's always painful. And so for us to get to that next level of the economic boom, uh, we have to go through this pain level. And I'm ready for it because we've already gone through these before. Let's just do it again. And if that means that uh, crypto goes down and I get to, to pay for it for another two, three, four years, so much the better. Does that mean there's not another bull run in there? There's always there's little mini bull runs here and there. And that's why I'll keep reminding you to take profits along the way. That's it. That's all you got to do. You don't have to sell everything, but again, sell what you want to do. So to answer your question, I don't think we're in a global collapse where everything's just going to just fall apart and uh, it's going to be the most awful thing in the world. I think on the supply side, once we get, get those things up and running, I think we'll do a lot better. And of course, when the Fed actually pivots, once the Fed pivots, it won't be so bad. And then, of course, I think unemployment's going to rise, and then it'll peak, and then it'll go back down after when we hit the recession. It's just how we talked about this yesterday. Uh, I'll be on Catalina Island. So close, Amy. So close. <laughs> My personal advisor. I got nothing for you. I already have it. So Jupiter Mojo says, are you going to stack some physical gold so we're to diversify? Yes. Actually, I should put that on my on my uh, diversification wheel I'm always talking about. Yeah, I have uh, gold and silver. Why Why not? Which is, I don't understand why the gold and silver bugs are like so anti-Bitcoin. I think I think the big people that are out there and like in the world who are like anti-Bitcoin, who are big into gold, like the shifts and those types of people, I think they're just posturing. I think the majority of people don't really care. They're just like, just... Make sure I can retain some wealth in some way, right? It's always the loudest that you think are represent the majority. It's not. The loudest don't represent us. Do you think Gal is a good investment? I have some. I think the, they're a great game developer. I think they're still developing in the, in the bear market. Pay attention to the ones that are developing. Huh. We are in the... We are in the middle of a reset, whatever that means. They told us this. Yeah, exactly. I'm still waiting for the Mad Max and everything to, to go down. Yeah, me probably could walk here. If you're in the Condado area, right by the Vanderbilt. And that's it. Hmm. Crypto assets be treated as financial products in South Africa is good or bad? I don't know. Uh, I don't know exactly what what that means in South Africa. Financial products. What is what are they talking about? Are they saying that these are financial products as far as like a security? Well, then it only comes to come out of the regulation overseen by South Africa and how stringent they are, I guess. 
but at least you have a little bit of clarity there. Maybe if you have clarity, then institutions get in because you have to understand like people with big money, they don't, it's not about making money. It's about retaining wealth, growing at a, at a slow amount. That's why like, if you take a look at, uh, let me see, where's Ben's, for T-bills, T-bonds, treasuries. Let me open this up. I can't show you everything, but Ben's got a great website into the cryptoverse. You guys, I have it. I signed up and uh, it's it's invaluable. Tons of stuff there. And some of the things that I can't show you uh, really help me make a decision of when I want to sell and, and uh, keep going. Treasuries. Oops, this one here. Oh, hey, would you like to would you like to see my screen? Yeah, probably. So again, so treasuries, wow. I mean, if you can make f four some percent on a one-year treasury, that's uh, and you have like millions and millions and or billions of dollars. Let's just say a hundred million, just give or take. I wouldn't mind four point seven six percent on a million dollars. That's not bad. Just to have it sit there and it's pretty much guaranteed by the government. I know people will say, "Well, the government sucks." Well, the government's going to pay you in dollars. Not too bad. And of course, people will say, "Well, the inflation rate's eight point eight, you know, somewhere around eight eight point two percent, so it's inflating away." Yeah, but if you take a look at the traditional market. You're down 30%. So uh, not too bad. Really, look at this. Spreads. Constant maturity. Anyhow, I'm just I'm just telling you right now, like that to me is a is a good deal if I have a, a lot of money. Uh, what else did I miss here? Ah, you can make almost 10% on iBond. Very nice. I bond. Oh, <laughs> BitBoy admitted he grew his channel when he stopped saying what people needed to hear and started saying what people wanted to hear. He lost integrity sense. I guess so. He's entertaining. Wrench power. I think that's it. So, <laughs> it's very true. You kiss and make up. All right, guys. So, that's it for today. I know it wasn't uh, the most entertaining show, you know, probably not, but... <sighs> You know, for the Voyager thing and the Celsius thing, I mean, I think we've all we've all learned a lesson, right? Keep it off exchanges. Those are like the worst things of all time. Get a get a ledger. And if you're having problems with the ledger thing, don't. Here's what you got to do. Oh, let me show you. So, you can watch a bunch of different websites or videos on on ledger, but. I got some pretty decent ones, and I make it very simple. Let's see. Ah, safety. So I go over it very simply, and they're very small. They're very short videos, seven minutes, five minutes or so. What's a crypto wallet? What's a public-private key? Setting up your nano ledger, and I, I show you like how to wipe things out and and re reinstall not reinstall but reboot everything for your ledger so you never lose your crypto and how to store it and everything else and like like me i kept i unfortunately i have like multiple ledgers and one i had a couple of different bitcoins and uh some ethereum and some other things that i had to i had to sell when i went back to el paso and i didn't have the ledger on me i had the the mnemonic phrase with me so i just ordered the ledger from ledger Sent it to my house in El Paso, and I put everything back in, and then boom, just like that, six figures, and it came back. And you can only do that when you've used it again and again and again, but you have to get used to it and go from there. Anyhow, that's it. We're on a, an hour. That's way too long. I want to say thanks, everybody, for stopping by. I appreciate it. If you like today's video, give it a thumbs up. I'll consider uh, subscribing, and that's all. So thanks, everybody, especially the wrenches. I appreciate you all, and I'll see you on the next one. Adiós.